and welcome to this video where I'll try and answer one of those questions that I hear a million times as a GIS consultant. Namely, how do you easiest acquire the data you need for a project? So um, if you remember one of my other videos or I a link to it in the description, I talk about how to go from your world of observation, so what we're interested in measuring, observing, registering, to what we call our world of discourse, how we describe this world that we want to measure, operate on. So, and there is one of those really key issues we have to address about how easy to access data or acquire data, namely, I talk about that you see your world of observation through your purpose and your a priori knowledge. And that leaves quite a lot of space to consider, well, how can I then modify this lens so that it better fits to existing data? And um, I have reorganized this into some sub questions. First of all, you must ask yourself could I modify the way that I define my entity types or property fields so they at least partly match some definitions in existing data? So if you define an urban green space in one way, and there's another research project or another data set that has defined a urban green space in a almost similar way. Then consider, well, does it influence on your work to change your definition so it matches the one of the other project so that you can use their data? That's, of course, the easiest way of doing things, making sure that your definitions of your world of discourse match definitions used in projects that have already generated data. That's only the, that's the easiest part of it. Then there can be situations where you can go part of the way by taking a general data set. So let's say um, you are interested in high rise buildings. You don't have any data set of high rise buildings, but you have a data set of buildings and you have a data set of some addresses. And then you can combine these together to see how many floors there are in the building. And from that, you can calculate is it a high rise building or is it not? So often there are attributes and or tags if you're talking. Um, open street map, which is a really interesting data set because it's not just this flat map that we all see on websites, there's data there. And the data contains a lot of tags that describes a lot of strange properties. So in many situations, you can go in and dig in, could I extract what I need from another data set such as open street map by filtering it on some tags or some attribute values. So another possibility. And finally, of course, there's that possibility where you can say, okay, do I, can I substitute my entity types or my property fields for something that I know correlates with them? So you know that the some pollutant correlates with some color of the soil, then instead of measuring the pollutant, you could perhaps find imagery data with the color of the soil. So, you know, can you find an indirect way of mapping it? And that will, again, save you a lot and lots of time. You um, really have to say, okay, if you can't find data in the, one of those ways, go to our sources. As I mentioned, OpenStreetMap contains lots of interesting data, 
especially if you go under the hood. If you go to their website and use the eye tool there, you can see which type of tags are. It's a really well documented page on what the data is. Um, Google Maps also has quite a lot of data. It has an API where you can extract a lot of services, so public toilets, playgrounds, shops, and so on. So there's quite a lot of data that you can get from Google Maps using the API of it. Um, traditional science has a tendency to generate long text log files, Excel spreadsheet tables, whatever, with a lot of latitude and longitude data in it. And of course, that can be loaded in as so-called XY data, so over the latitude and longitude, also all coordinate system, and then used as geospatial data. In general, basically anything that has addresses in it is good. So membership lists, list of participants in some conference, everything where you can find an address or something that can be translated to an address, for instance, a telephone number that can be looked up in a telephone directory and then translated to an address. All of this type of information that you can get relating to addresses can also be really useful because there's lots and lots of services. Most countries have their own service of how to geocode addresses, so translate from an address to a coordinate. There's also global ones. Both Google has one and there's also an open source version where you can translate addresses to points. So if you can get hold of data with addresses, you're also home clear. And, but it's not only addresses, basically anything that contains the name of the location, so the name of a country, name of a town, the name of a municipality, can be used for, um, for mapping purposes of, of geodata. So scanning text, looking for words that or descriptive names of locations, um, newspaper articles, lots of possibilities where you use the fact that most places can be geolocated. There's a fantastic service, Geonames, where you can type in basically any name of a location and it will translate it. Ah, not any, but most common named of places can be typed in or used it as an API so you can do it programmatically to translate a location name to a coordinate. And um, and this also goes a bit further because remember there's lots of statistical data and Wikipedia articles and UN data sets that again also just contains names of locations. Many of those the statistical data will be municipalities or survey tracts or whatever it's called in your country, um, where we have statistical data bound within some spatial limits. Um, Wikipedia has also lots of articles relating to specific places. And again there, those place names can be geocoded. It's even within Wikipedia possible to do it within Wikipedia's framework. Social media, once upon a time, was a really fantastic source of um, geodata. Um, it's becoming less because luckily people are becoming more conscious of their privacy and therefore it's getting more difficult to mine data from social media. Um, Twitter is perhaps one of those that still are possible to get some really useful data from. Um, an example, one of my favorite examples is this a one million tweet map. So basically a map of the tags from the latest one million tweets so you can see where is some tag being used a lot or where is it not. So 
I think that is really one of those, you know, I can use hours watching it and digging into that data. And then finally, all of these fitness trackers. Um, they all generate files. Um, you can typically download them personally. So there's GPX files, which can be loaded into a geospatial software. Um, some more sites also publish them aggregated, which can sometimes give problems. Um, some of us, are, of us might remember Stamina, which um, published their users' maps or their yeah, user tracks. And alas, there was quite a lot of uh, American military personnel that used this app. And um, therefore, one could see where there was some military garrisons bases that um, were probably not as public as um, was intended that they became. So, uh, so um, fitness trackers are fun, um, both as a personal tool for tracking location, but also um, some of them publish aggregated data that can also be fun to work with to understand where do people run in towns, and stamina is still one of those data sets that you can um, you can access. If everything else fails, then there's only one way that is collecting your data. Um, and of course, this comes back to this talk about how you design your world of discourse, how you define your entity types and your property fields. I'll link a video to that or a link um, in the description. But also, um, basically just think about how can it what is the easiest way of doing it so um common is to have good old geo, so so this term georeferencing basically means that you take a image that has no coordinates on it and then you assign geographic coordinates to that image and common is to do that with scan maps um i often use it um in interview situations where people draw on maps and if I print out maps with these some AR tags or AR so this strange UCO that is University um, of Barcelona no um, anyway some Spanish university they have developed um, these markers so they are basically this like QR codes that you put on your map and when you scan the map they automatically can be used to georeference the map so your scanned image suddenly becomes geodata which is um, a neat trick for handing out pe these maps for, to people letting them draw on them scanning them getting that data in you can also manually or digitize so basically look at some image data be it scan maps or aerial photographs, trace whatever you're interested on using your geospatial software. Um, there's a lot of automatic process for doing this. So image classification algorithms that can work for both satellite and aerial photographs and imagery from drones. So there's lots of possibilities to extract data from images. A little special variant of this is um, data that can generate 3D models. So LIDAR, this is, so LIDAR is um, light reflector radar. So it's basically a laser beam from something that hits a target and then you measure the time of flight of that laser beam. Then you can measure the distance and you can make a 3D model from that. There's also um, stereo cameras. So I have that relative cheap small things like this one. So um, basically just, a camera with one, two, three lenses in this case, with um, well-defined distance and a well-defined optics. So from that, you can generate three-dimensional imagery. Um, you can also use standard cameras to do photogeometry. So you can have two or more imageries. You can compose them to generate 
3D models using photogeometric software. So, and you can have that even for as apps on your mobile phone. So there's lots of possibilities there. But all of that is via specialized three-dimensional 3D modeling, typically buildings, that type of phenomena. Um, again, there, if you can make someone else collect the data, it's um, easier so to crowdsource data collection. Setting up some web uh, page where people can add in data. Um, ArcGIS Online is probably one of those more common uh, tools for doing that. Um, so set up a map, let people uh, enter data. There are some, there are some fun experiments because products like ArcGIS Online only lets you do points lines and polygons, those classic geospatial elements. Um, but there's also been projects where people have been given a airbrush like the tool that you know from eight applications. Um, and then you can br brush in uncertain, you know, how, how secure do you feel or un unsecure do you feel? So you spray a lot where you feel unsecure, that type of thing. There's lots of, um, possibilities to do more custom made web based um, things using tools from all of those image libraries that are out there where you can do things like airbrush mobile data collections so there's lots of apps for doing in the field data collection um i'll be linking to some of them in the descriptions um Typically, they allow you to enter some data, take a photograph, and then they will take the GPS coordinate of your location, and that will be added together with the data. So for public data and photographs, that's super. A um, bit more advanced are mobile mapping apps. So they will typically allow you to walk around something, to trace it, or even draw on your mobile to phone screen so yeah you can draw polygons and lines and so on so again there are links in, in the description and finally of course if you really need precision work there's lots of survey equipment total stations laser scanners whatever um, outside the scope of this so there's lots of ways of um, collecting your data this was basically just some overview of all of you know all this what can we do different tools um so um i hope you like this i hope that um, it gave you some ideas to how to do it and then look in the description for more detailed videos on different tools you can use and different descriptions so Hope you liked it. Hope to see you in another video. Bye.